This morning we're going to look again at Psalm 119. And there's a old chorus that came out sometime in the 70s from Psalm 93, I think. I can't remember. But it's, um, it's about the Word of God, and you will be familiar with it. But let's just prep our hearts with this song. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul Testimony of the Lord is sure Making wise the simple More to be desired are they than gold Yea, than much fine gold Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord. Enlightening the eyes More to be desired are they than gold Yea, than much fine gold Sweeter also than honey And the honeycomb The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are pure and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I envision in my mind <coughs> As psalmist was penning those words, honey dripping from a person's lips. And uh, that's the analogy that he uses, the illustration of how sweet God's word is. It's like, it's like sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. My granddad was a beekeeper. He raised bees and had somewhere around 50 hives, I guess. And I can remember... Uh, with my granddad um, smoking those hives with the little smoker that he'd put newspaper in and he always smoked a cigar so he didn't wear the gear around his head because I think the cigar kept the bees away from his face but he'd pull those um, the, I forget what they call them the anyway he'd pull the honeycomb out of the 
out of the hive and man it was just incredible to see the that honeycomb and and oh how good the the honey was it was sweet and we used to cut a chunk of that beeswax filled with honey off and we'd chew on it for an hour or so just chewing every drip of honey well that's that's the way the psalmist says that the word of god is and uh, beginning in in verse 73 the psalmist says to the Lord, Lord, your hands have made and fashioned me. Ponder on that for just a moment, that, that God's hands have made and fashioned you. Uh, David said in his psalm, before you, uh, you knew me when I was in my mother's womb, before I was knitted together in my mother's womb, you knew me. And it, it makes me realize that God has fashioned each and every one of us as we are, of course, created in his image. But the personality that you have, um, all of that, the, the, the abilities you have, all of that, God has fashioned those for his glory. And each one of us are unique to him. He's created us and made us and, and he loves us and thank God that um, although we were born in iniquity, born in sin, God, by his grace and his mercy, he called us and he saved us so that we can have fellowship and relationship. I just want to remind you this morning that regardless of what you may feel about yourself, and we all feel different feelings, negative feelings about ourselves, it's a good thing to remember that, that God has fashioned and created us just as we are for his glory. And he loves us and he loves his creation. And then the psalmist says, give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. That not only to learn them, but that understanding and the combination of that word learn means that we have a full understanding and we learn them really, that which leads to wisdom, to apply your commandments in my life. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice because I've hoped in your word. That sounds a little bit braggadocious, but, but not really when you look at it. He says, those who fear you shall see me and rejoice because I've hoped in your word. Isn't it great to see individuals that you know have come to trust Christ? And, and when you see them living according to God's word, when you see them growing in the knowledge of the Lord, becoming more mature as believers as they follow Christ, as they're disciples of his, doesn't it cause you to say, God, thank you so much? I was thinking yesterday as the two were baptized in the service, I love seeing people come to Christ and I love seeing them follow in believers' baptism. But really, I want to see them five years from now, having grown in the knowledge of the Lord. Ten years from now, having grown in the knowledge of the Lord. Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five years from now. Um, that causes me to say, God, you're so good. Not only... Have they been saved? But Lord, they have become disciples and they're growing in it. So that's what the psalmist is saying. People will fear the Lord. They'll be glad and fear the Lord because they see that I've hoped in your word. Verse 75, I know, O Lord, that your rules are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Here's that theme that we looked at Friday, God's affliction. And the psalmist again comes back to the point that, that God had afflicted him. And we know that God has purpose and affliction in our life, primarily is to conform us to the likeness of his son, Jesus. And so the first thing you and I need to do when we come into affliction, when we come into suffering or hard times, trials, is say, God, teach me through this. Lord, I, yeah, we cry and say, God, rescue me from this, but God's never promised to rescue us out of affliction, but he certainly will see us through it. Verse 76, let your steadfast love comfort me according to your promise to your servant. God, I'm comforted in the midst of my affliction because of your steadfast love, your compassion. I know that you see. I know that you're looking down from heaven. I know that there's nothing in my life that has happened that has not first filtered through your fingers of grace and love and mercies. And God, your steadfast love comforts me according to the promises that you've given to me in your word. Let your mercy come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. 
Let the insolent be put to shame because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for me, I will meditate on your precepts. Now, evidently, uh, the insolent, those who have been uh, coming against him, we've seen earlier in the psalm, saying bad things about him, criticizing him, etc., because he holds to the word of God. He says, although they've, they've, uh, they've come against me, God, um, don't let them put me to shame because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for you, God, I'm still going to continue to meditate on your precepts. No matter what they say about me, no matter how much they ridicule, no matter how much they criticize me, God, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to contemplate, I'm going to dwell on your precepts. And that's a good thing for us to do when we are attacked by other individuals, when we're criticized for whatever reason. Meditate on God's word. It will change our hearts and our minds. It's a good way not to dwell on those negative comments, uh, those arrows that the enemy shoots at us, and sometimes he uses well-intentioned dragons within the body to shoot them, uh, to shoot those arrows. But when we meditate on God's word and his precepts, uh, we hold to his promises. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. God, I change my heart. God, continue to change my heart, Lord, so that, God, as, as you change my heart, Lord, I'll be blameless in my ways, that, that my ways, the way I live my life, the way I conduct my life, in relationship and in light of others, God, that in that way that I conducted, God, that I will reflect your mercies and your goodness and I'll reflect the judgments and the word of God. Don't you just love it? Um, there was a song this morning that came to my mind, and I know I've done this a lot of times, but I just love this song. One of my favorite old hymns. I was just resting in his assurance this morning. Blessed assurance Sure. This is 
keep you. May his face shine upon you. Meditate on his word today. Uh, contemplate his precepts. Chew on his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Pray and ask God to give you an opportunity and a chance today to plant a seed in somebody's life, uh, to cultivate that soil maybe where somebody else has planted, or if God by his grace would allow, pray and ask God that you'd be a part of somebody else coming to know Christ today. Be a witness for him wherever you are today, whatever you do. Uh, I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day.